Hey, what's up, nerds? Welcome back to Radio Free Hammer Hall, and we are going to do an in-depth review here of the great unclean ones. Yes, all of the dirty giant dudes that Nurgle has to offer. So, um, you know, there's three basic ones. You have uh, Rodigus, you have the generic great unclean one, which has four different weapon loadout options. And you have the Exalted Greater Demon of Nurgle, or many people just call it the Exalted Great Unclean. So I've broken it down into basically really considering this is six different Great Unclean One options, although it's, it's basically three different War Scrolls, but with the generic Great Unclean one having so many options, it's um, they really all act quite differently. So I wanted to really emphasize that and go a little bit deeper on those things. So they all really have a bunch of things in common. They're all demons. They're all behemoths and monsters, uh, as well as heroes slash leaders. They are all wizards that cast two spells per turn each and can unbind two spells per turn each. They all have 16 wounds, a 4-up save, and an additional 5-up save against wounds and mortal wounds, and 6s reflect back mortal wounds uh, in melee. They all heal d3 wounds in your hero phase. And when they charge on, you roll a die on a four up, they do D3 mortal wounds uh, to the units that they charge. So overall, um, you can see they're strong casters with two spells each. They are taking up a hero slot and a behemoth slot. They're very defensive um, overall. Um, and, you know, they do some impact hits, if they ever get into combat. So, uh, overall, I just wanted to take a quick look at the defensive profile on these, um, just so that we have kind of a baseline, since they're all the same. Um, so 16 wounds again, 4 up save, and 5 up blubber and bile save, that's what that's called. So, your damage absorption is 48 so assuming no rend and no mortal wounds, enemy units are going to have to do an average of 48 wounds to your great unclean one in order to kill this 16 wound model. And if they don't do it in one turn, it gets even more because you're healing D3 wounds per turn. That is a really tough to move object. Like this is really, really stuck in there. Pretty darn hard. So our magic lores, because these guys are all wizards and all demons, uh, we get spells from the lore of virulence and we have the foul regenesis spell as well. So on a 7-up on our casting roll, we can move the Cycle of Corruption to any place we'd like. Uh, and then from the Lore of Virulence, um, we can take Favored Poxes, casts on a 7, 14-inch range. And one unit gets minus 1 to hit, minus 1 to wound, and minus 1 to save. And the interesting thing here is that this goes until the great unclean one dies, moves, or casts another spell. That is pretty big and makes your ordering of things pretty difficult. Like this, in the hero phase, this is going to be like the last thing that you want to do if you're using this spell. It kind of, and it's also immobilizing your great unclean one. But at the same time, you are really like just taking one enemy unit down to like nothing. Minus one to hit and minus one to wound is just really, really powerful. 
Uh, Glorious Afflictions casts on a five, has a 21 inch range, and you have the move, run, and charge for the enemy unit that target is targeted by the spell. And enemy units that fly can no longer uh, use their flying ability until the next hero phase. So this is another really strong one. Um, casting on a five is a big deal. Um, although I have to say, I, I don't run into many occasions where I really want movement debuffs on my opponent. Like, I just don't see where that's really all that powerful most of the time, unless you're playing a really defensive game. Uh, I'm just not really sure where that fits in. Uh, and then our last one is Sumptuous Pestilence. Goes off on a six. And then all enemy units within seven inches uh, get one mortal wound to each of the units. And if the unit has five or more models, it instead gets D3 mortal wounds. So this is an interesting choice, I think, in your more melee-oriented Great Unclean ones that are really going to be getting in the mix with your opponent slamming themselves in there. This gives you the option to do extra damage to your opponent. Um, they have a big base, so you're going to be getting likely multiple different units into combat in one shot. So this really gives you um, a, a nice little extra bump there to how much your damage you're doing to the enemy with a more offensive build. Personally, I usually take Favored Poxes. Um, it's a good spell. It's really good to just basically deactivate one of your opponent's units. Some noteworthy artifacts we can take. Um, so there's six artifacts available to uh, Nurgle Demon Heroes. I think there's really only three that are all that great. Um, the other ones are very fluffy and fun, but they're not really... I wouldn't really talk about them in a competitive way, which is really the lens that I'm looking at this through right now. So the first one is the Wither Stave. Uh, it makes your enemy uh, re-roll hit rolls of six while they're within 12 inches of the bearer. So... Uh, that's kind of like it, the same level of debuff that re-rolling ones buffs something. Um, but the key on this is a lot of abilities trigger on a six. So you're forcing those abilities to be re-rolled. And you have much less likelihood of actually getting the ability off again on the re-roll after that six. So that's really key there. Uh, the Wither Stave is a really powerful option. Uh, the Tome of a Thousand Poxes, um, if, you know, for our purposes, we're just looking at, you know, the first ability of this, that you're getting plus one to cast on your Lore of Nurgle spells. Uh, so that is not going to include spells on the War Scroll, Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, or any endless spells, but it will... Uh, give you the buff on the spells that are available from the lore of Nurgle. Um, the other option on this, if the uh, unit that this is, or I'm sorry, the hero that this is on is not already a wizard, it lets them cast one spell a turn. And then the Endless Gift is our last one. At the start of the Battleshock phase, roll a die for each wound that has been allocated to this model during the same turn. On a 4-up, that wound is healed. Now, the note that's important on this is that allocated bit. So, wounds are allocated after your initial save roll, not before not when you take your uh, Bile and Blubber save. So, this is potentially going to heal more wounds than were actually taken by the model in that turn. 
Um, possibly. Unlikely, but at very least, this is going to really heal up a pretty tremendous amount of damage. Um, this The Endless Gift makes it really, really hard to kill a great unclean one. So, just to, you know, clarify again how the ordering works. Your opponent rolls to hit, they roll to wound. Wounds are allocated. So, at that point, that's when you count up how many wounds are allocated to the great unclean one. Then you get your five up save. Then during your battle shock phase, you roll a die for each wound that has been allocated, not how much damage has been taken. So let's get into the specifics. Rodigus. Uh, so he has, unlike the other options, he has no command ability, and he does not have Noxious Bile, uh, which is the 7-inch shooting attack. Um, he also gets a Streams of Brackish Filth. So in your hero phase, units within 6 inches, um, you roll a die uh, on a 4-up. It... Uh, gets uh, the enemy unit gets d3 mortal wounds uh, and it's only on a six up if the unit happens to fly uh, then we have his spell the deluge of nurgle which is a very powerful spell goes off on a seven so it's a little bit unreliable but you roll seven dice and for each four up one visible enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds now just to note here that that four up goes to five and then to six as rodigus takes more damage uh, and then just a quick look at his melee profile he has his gnarled maw uh, i'm sorry gnarled rod and fanged maw uh the gnarled rod does five attacks Twos and threes rend one, two damage, so that's averaging 5.6 damage. Uh, but yeah, before you take armor saves into account. The Fanged Maw does D3 attacks on threes and twos, rend two, two damage, so we're averaging 2.2 damage per turn with that. Um, that's going to be a little bit more swingy than the Gnarl Rod because of the D3 attacks. Uh, and just to note here, the Gnarl Rod uh, on its hit rolls and the Fanged Maw on its wound rolls will become weaker as Rodigus takes damage. All right, so our generic Great Unclean one. Uh, he has a 5-inch move. I believe Rodigus also has a 5-inch move. Um, he has the Noxious Bile shooting attack, so it's D6 shots on threes and twos, and the two up wound roll uh, gets modified as he takes damage. Uh, it's minus two rend, one damage, so you're averaging 1.9 damage per turn, uh, you know, per attack with the Noxious Bile. Um, it's just a little extra splash of damage. It doesn't tend to do a lot, but it's it's a little nice to have, a nice little extra bump, uh, especially when you're running a build that doesn't really have offensive weapons. Um, and then our command ability here, which is very strong. One Nurgle Demon unit within 21 inches gets plus one attack to each of their melee weapons. So if you have a unit with a multiple attack profile, uh, Particularly of note would be Pusquail Blight Lords, because they're demons, as well as Rotbringers. And your Plague Drones, each of those has multiple attack profiles for melee. So they are getting plus three or plus four attacks each uh, per model. Whereas, you know, your... Blight Kings or your Plague Bearers are only going to be getting one extra attack per model. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't use this on Blight Kings. My bad. 
uh, on your plague bearers, it's only getting one extra attack. So it, it's not really that exciting. Uh, and then your basic spell here on the war scroll is plague wind. It goes off on a seven. You draw a 14 inch line. All of the non Nurgle units on that line get D3 mortal wounds, and all of the Nurgle units on that line get uh, heal D3 wounds. Now, important to note here that these are both friend or foe. So, in a mirror match, this spell is terrible, borderline useless. You can hit their allies if they're taking allied stuff. Uh, otherwise, you're just healing your opponent. Uh, so you're going to want to carefully place that spell. It's really only going to be used for healing. Otherwise, it's a decent range damage spell. So we got four weather, uh, weapon options. Uh, two different ones for each hand. On the right hand, we can take a Doomsday Bell, which gives us a bubble of plus three movement within seven inches. Or the Bile Sword, which is a really strong melee weapon. Uh, in the left hand, we can take the Flail, which is, again, another really strong melee weapon. Or the Bile Blade, which gives you plus one to cast and unbind until your next hero phase. Uh, and you take one mortal wound. So those are our basic options for weapons. Now these are the profiles of these weapons for uh, what they do in melee. Um, the Plague Flail, three attacks, threes and twos, rend one, two damage. So that's actually your highest damage output. Um, I was actually kind of surprised at that, that this ends up being the highest average um, because it doesn't seem like it would be like the really strong melee attack, but it is. Um, the massive bile sword clocks in just, you know, like 10% lower in, uh, average damage output. It is much more swingy, uh, because you have the, uh, higher hit and wound rolls. Um, but you do have minus two rend instead of one and then three damage. So whenever this thing hits, it hits like a truck. When it whiffs, it whiffs. Um, and it's going to whiff a lot. Um, our Bile Blade and Doomsday Bell are both really, they're just sort of nominal uh, melee attacks. Those are not really uh, going to do much for you. The really uh, important thing there is that they have other abilities that go along with them. So, our four different loadouts. What actually really happens here? Now, one quick thing before I forget about it, you also have the host of Nurglings on this and the Exalted Great Unclean one. Uh, it's just, I believe, three attacks on fives and fives, one damage with no rend. It's not even really worth factoring in here, but I'll just mention it because it's a thing and it's really funny when things get killed by Nurglings uh, on your base. Um, and they're a fun modeling opportunity, but they're, uh, it's not that useful of an attack. So our, when you take the Flail and Massive Bile Sword, this is your really strong offensive option. So this is doing 6.3 damage on average per turn. Um, now we got to note here that your Bile Sword is a bit swingy. So that is not necessarily uh, the most reliable, but... Uh, both of these have rend. The Bile Sword has uh, rend two. Uh, so this can certainly kick a lot of butt. The other thing to note here is that the command ability can be used to target himself. So that damage will go up quite a bit if he chooses to target himself. Our second loadout, the Plague Flail and Doomsday Bell. So this is our second highest damage output. Um, and it's also adding three inches to movement, both for the Great Unclean one and any other models within seven inches at the start of the movement phase. So this is really an interesting option that he's still pretty strong on offense, uh, 
but you're also gaining mobility. So in a lot of cases, this could be a really good option for uh, many folks, uh, depending on what exactly you want to do, what sort of build you're going for. Uh, the Bile Blade and Massive Bile Sword. So this is giving you, again, a pretty decent offensive monster. Um, you know, kind of moderate offense compared to the uh, optimal offensive outload uh, loadout. But it's also giving you the plus one cast and unbind ability. And that's really strong. So it's going to give you that ability to more consistently cast your spells. And a lot of your spells can be very offensive or can combine well with your... Uh, uh, your attack profile or the fact that you are uh, getting into combat, depending on which spell you're taking, uh, to really uh, boost his combat ability uh, in addition to what you're doing with um, uh, that massive Bile Sword. Now the last one is the Bile Blade and Doomsday Bell. This is the current build that I use on my Great Unclean one. Uh, this is the Buff Wagon build, guys. Uh, this guy hits like a feather pillow, but you're getting plus three movement and plus one to cast and unbind. Um, I have frequently also added Tome of a Thousand Poxes to this particular build. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to make him an incredibly powerful caster. Uh, this guy is just ends up being a great utility piece for your army overall. Um, although when he gets into combat, his main role is really to gum up the works and slow your opponent down. He's really not going to hit back very hard. All right. So our Exalted Great Unclean one. First, just a note on this, this is a Forge World model, so it is resin. It is $190 retail, as opposed to, I believe, $130 retail for the new Great Unclean one kit. Um, and he is 460 points. Uh, Rodigus and the generic Great Unclean one are 340 points. So this is an extra 120 points that you're putting into this. Uh, you have the same shooting attack as your genetic, generic Great Unclean one. Uh, your melee with the massive Bile Sword is really similar to uh, the one on the generic Great Unclean one. He just gets an additional attack um, and he hits on threes instead of fours. Um, he has the same spell as the generic Great Unclean one and the same command ability as the generic Great Unclean one, except it just has a 28-inch range instead of a 21-inch range. So with his massive Bile Sword and the no other melee attacks that he does, he does not even have the Nurglings. Um, he's doing 5.3 damage on average. But, um, again, he's when he hits you, he's going to hit like a truck. When he whiffs, he whiffs pretty hard. All right, so compare and contrast here um, on the different builds. Rodigus actually clocks in at your strongest melee grade unclean one, which is really interesting and surprising to me. I, I had not actually done that math out before prepping for this video. Uh, and that makes him much more of an interesting option than I had ever really thought of before. Uh, the only note here is that all of your other Great Unclean One options also have uh, that shooting attack. So it changes the math a little bit, but not tremendously. Um, your Plague Flail and Massive Bile Sword comes in second. Then your Exalted Great Unclean one comes in third, however, at an extra 120 points. Uh, then your Flail and Doomsday Bell 
your Bile Blade and Bile Sword, and then your Bile Blade and Doomsday Bell comes in very last in melee. But as mentioned before, you're not taking the Bile Blade and Doomsday Bell for their melee. You're taking them for all of the other abilities they come with, and they happen to bonk people in the head too. So, the other things that we're comparing and contrasting here. Rodigus is unique, so he can't take artifacts or command traits. That also means that, uh, you know, between his War Scroll and not being able to take Tome of a Thousand Poxes, he has no ability to buff his casting or unbinding unless he's next to a piece of arcane terrain. Uh, he's very powerful in melee, and his spell is really powerful, but it goes off on a 7, so it's a little bit unreliable. And he has no shooting attack and no command ability. That The no command ability, I think, is kind of a big deal. Um, especially in certain army builds. Your exalted great unclean one is super expensive, um, both monetarily and in points. And he's... Like, there's nothing really better enough about him than your generic Great Unclean one to, I think, ever really think that he's worth that extra 120 points. So then our generic Great Unclean one, um, he's really versatile. He can use artifacts and command traits. Um, you can build him out as, you know, a strong caster, uh, you know, a tool for mobility, you can combine those two things and have like a really strong buff wagon. Or you can also uh, load him out to be a pretty powerful melee monster. Uh, and then combining him with his own command trait targeting himself would probably put him over the top of Rodigus. I didn't actually um, really do that math out, but I'm pretty sure that would come out on top of Rodigus. So, what conclusions do we draw from this? Uh, the Exalted Great Unclean One is terrible right now. He needs to get dropped in points. He probably should be less than everything else. Um, the only really noteworthy thing that he's better at than the other Great Unclean Ones, uh, he moves 7 instead of 5, but that's also on a damage table, so as he takes damage, he slows down. Um... And his command ability has greater reach, but I feel like, you know, at least with like the generic Great Unclean one, a lot of times you're going to want to be targeting him. And very frequently you're going to have your Great Unclean one up near the fight, so that extra range really is not worth it. Rodigus is very strong. Uh, being unique is a handicap. Uh, makes him a lot less reliable in terms of magic. Um, and also, not having a command ability is definitely painful. Uh, when you're dropping you know, 340 points into your Great Unclean one and getting no uh, command ability out of it, you know, then you're forced to put other uh, things with command abilities into your list. Um, and some of those can be a little expensive and of, um, you know, questionable use sometimes. Um, then we have our generic Great Unclean one, which is really versatile, really powerful. Um, it offers some unique and powerful buffs. You know, you can add the Tome of a Thousand Poxes to make him a crazy strong caster. You can add the uh, Endless Gift to make him just an absolute brick and impossible to move. You can build him for offense if you want to. You can build him for uh, adding mobility to your army and buffing your army. So I think either Rodigus or a generic Great Unclean one are really good options for you it all depends on what you're doing with your list. So make those choices carefully and uh, really think about what your list needs in a great unclean one. 
Now, I will say that these things are so powerful overall, the, the generic Great Unclean One and Rodigus, that I would say almost every Nurgle list needs one of them. Or it would be really strongly benefited by having one of them in there. So it's really kind of up to you as to which one you pick. They're, you know, those five are very good options, all of them. Um, you know, I need to personally experiment with Rodigus some more. Um, well, at all. Uh, I have not uh, put him on the table. I don't actually have one built as Rodigus yet. Um, but I think I'm going to try proxying him and seeing how he does and see if he is worth picking up another great unclean one for. Uh, but, you know, in general, this is giving you access to a lot of really powerful things. And it's on a very durable body, which is, I can't emphasize how strong that is to have you know, a double caster that is really difficult to kill. Um, you know, and in many cases, you can set him up to also be very good in melee or give you all kinds of other bonuses so very very strong the great unclean ones are um i need to do more experimentation one of the cool things too about the great unclean one kit and this is definitely something to note here um that it's pretty easy to not have to really commit to any one particular build with this kit um, it really is designed in such a way that it's very easy to magnetize the different weapons options and simply, you know, swap out arms when you uh, have different builds that you wanted to use. You can have Rodigus and all four other weapons uh, available to you that you can just snap on and off if you magnetize the model. So that is also a really nice option. It's almost like they designed it to be that way. Uh, I'm not sure they did, because I don't think GW sells magnets. Uh, so I don't know if they would do that on purpose if they were not selling magnets. But uh, it's definitely a really nice feature of the design of the model. Also, just as a side note, these are really awesome models too. They really big props to Games Workshop for uh, making a great centerpiece model that also is extremely useful, really versatile, and you want to put in just about every list that you're running for this army. Uh, I love it. I love the Great Unclean one, and uh, hopefully this was uh, informative for everybody so you kind of get a feeling and understanding of the different options that you have out there get uh, the wheels turning a little bit. And I know in preparing for this, um, I definitely am looking at Rodigus differently than I was before. So uh, with that, I will leave you with that thought and I will be signing off. And may the grandfather bless you all.